So I've been on the hunt for an alternative to my favorite little Casios. We already know they're the king of cheap digitals, so I was hoping to find something to potentially dethrone them. After all, the more options, the better, as far as I'm concerned. What I quickly landed on was this highly reviewed 34mm Timex on Amazon. A big thanks to Amazon for sending this in free of charge for a review, because as we'll soon discover, it's not exactly a keeper. The watch arrived in the regular low-end Timex packaging. In all honesty, this is a little better than most Casio watches and does a slightly better job of protecting the piece during shipping. So straight away, you can see this bears a striking resemblance to the likes of the A168, both in terms of sizing and design. This Timex T78587 has the same style of high shine case with a darker inner portion and a digital display at the very center. For a digital, it's quite minimalist with far less text than most of the alternatives I've looked at before. It's not clear how this model correlates to the similarly styled T80. Supposedly this one's also a remake of a vintage original, but I've struggled to track one of those down. The digital display here is larger than many classic Casios, so in theory, it should give better visibility. Unfortunately, that isn't really the case. When square on, both are comparable to the human eye. However, when rotating the Timex even slightly, the display starts changing colors, as if you were looking at it through a pair of polarized sunglasses. I'm not sure how well this will come across on camera, but in person, it varies from orange to green, occasionally producing an iridescence that accentuates the ghosting of the digits. For the most part, it's fine, but it just looks odd compared to the matte finish used in most Casios. You'll notice the acrylic over the surface is curved, which I've never seen on a digital, and I think it looks pretty cool. The implementation of this design may have handicapped the visuals in other areas though. Not only is the crystal and accompanying black border raised rather substantially from the display, leaving a wide gap beneath, but you'll quickly notice the two white spaces towards the top and bottom, which are seemingly to blame. Perhaps cost is the reason that these aren't black, though in their current guise, they are quite visible and hard to ignore once you know they're present. A bit like one of those spots that you sometimes get on the inside of your nose. I had a similar gripe with the Casio W217H, though luckily that model didn't have these ugly contrasting spaces. Before we get onto this truly weird bracelet, let's touch on the rest of the build. Online product listings can't seem to agree on the case material used with this model. Some are saying brass, others are listing steel, whilst Amazon US has it down as resin. If it is metal, it's a very cheaply chromed one, as to me, this just feels like plastic. The generic manual that comes with the watch fails to confirm this, though the black version named the W116 definitely does have a resin case. Either way, don't expect this to hold up well against scratches. Like most Casios, it will accrue nicks over time and won't survive as well as a more expensive steel watch. The lugs follow the same curvature as the crystal, which looks surprisingly elegant, though the case finishing does leave a lot to be desired. When you consider it's around £40 at the time of recording, you wouldn't expect much, but you would think it would be better than the A168, which retails for half the price. However, when side by side, it's clear the less expensive option has the cleaner lines. Sure, both have a comparable glossy finish, but it appears that Timex has a more generous mold that results in scruffier, less precise edges. They're more rounded off, which I think makes the watch look cheaper. Nevertheless, both are close in size. This Timex comes in with a modest 34.5mm diameter, 10.5mm thickness, and a short 43mm lug to lug length, making it a viable choice for average to slim wrists, or just those after a smaller watch. To the rear is the screwed steel case back, which is very similar to that on most Casios. It does come with the same 3 bar splash resistance rating as many Casios as well, though I can't say this piece has any sort of a reputation for outdoing its designation, as is well known among variants of the classic F91W. It may be submergible, but I'd probably hang fire, especially for 40 quid a pop. Within is an unnamed movement that has a sticker over the cell, with the text Philippines BZ9M555 upon it. I can't find a module under that name online, and the manual also has no further information. So let's just run through what you can expect from it. By default, the display is split into sections with the time at the bottom, date at the top right, and day of the week in the central slice. All the pushers have their labeled arrows indicating their function. It provides a basic stopwatch and alarm alongside a capable Indiglo backlight that does a great job of illuminating the display at night. While the functions are essentially identical to the Casio's, Unfortunately, the interface is clunkier despite the additional button. Setting the alarm in particular is the opposite of intuitive. 
I'd like to consider myself very clued up with tech in general, and even I've struggled to work out how this operates. It's much faster to set on the Casio with one less button too. One handy feature of this Timex module is that you can put the pushers into a silent mode by pressing the start stop button whilst on the main screen. In certain situations, I imagine this could be useful. Something a little less useful is the bracelet. Bracelet? Yeah, despite the wrist shot earlier, this watch is actually fitted with an expanding bracelet by default. I thought this would be perfect for me as it could just adapt to my wrist size, like expanding bracelets are designed to do. Unfortunately though, even at its smallest, there's still over two fingers worth of excess space. I can understand this on a 40 or maybe a 42 millimeter watch, but this time is 34 millimeters. My wife even commented that it looked like a unisex piece, yet it's been paired with a bracelet that only fits larger wrists. True, my wrists are skinny, but that combination just doesn't make sense. I've never had this issue with similarly sized watches in the past, so I'm quite frankly baffled at this implementation. You'd think if anything, they'd go a little bit on the small side and then it can expand to fit everyone else. Cause I don't think there are many people who've got a wrist, you know, the size of my head. <laughs> Technically, it is possible to adjust the bracelet like this, though they aren't proactively designed for it, meaning it's a painful process. When the most viewed link removal video for expansion bracelets is over 15 minutes long, you know it's getting ridiculous. The whole idea of the stretchiness is that adjustments shouldn't be necessary in the first place. Not to mention you'll probably void your warranty by doing this too. You know what companies are like these days. It's a shame too because the quality of this is much better than most of the cheap Casios I've come across. Sure you will often get pulled hairs, but these expandables are the fastest on off bands you can get your hands on. The one I reviewed on the Festina dress watch last year came with a special adjustment system that worked very nicely. Something like that would have been welcome here. Additionally, like with the Casios, the brushed finish doesn't match the high shine case whatsoever. For double the price of the A168, I just don't see any reason to buy this at retail. Sure, it's got a good review rating overall, but I can't see any advantages over the Casio for the increased cost. And from what my research tells me, the same applies for the more recent T80 model. If you have a small wrist and we're thinking about this 34 mm watch, don't waste your time as the strap might not fit. I've also seen several reports of the lugs snapping off upon attempted replacement of said bracelet due to poor quality materials. The origins of this watch are also mysterious. Nowhere does it say where the product is made, nor can I find it online. I suppose there's a chance that the whole product could be made in the Philippines, given the label over the battery in the module, which would probably be better than the product being produced under questionable labor practices in China. There's no solid evidence either way, as seems to be Timex's approach with their movements. I'll affiliate link the Casio I mentioned earlier in the description below as it's just much better value. And so my search for an alternative continues. If you can think of any other recommendations, make sure you whack them down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.